Before I get started, I just wanted to just talk very briefly about using the alcohol ink instead of oil with the cold wax because the cold wax and the alcohol ink are both solvent based they mix up really well now if you're used to mixing oil paint into your cold wax you'll notice a difference when you're mixing initially when you mix the alcohol ink into the cold wax you get a much looser medium but as the alcohol evaporates out of those puddles of cold wax and alcohol ink it thickens back up and you get it goes back to more of the consistency that you get on the cold wax coming right out of the can so not to worry if you start to mix it and you notice that you're getting a, a thinner mixture it's just looser but as the alcohol evaporates it does thicken back up again so I have my alcohol ink and cold wax mixed up over here to my right I was going to mix it up in the butcher's tray so that I could show you the piles after I mix them up but I find the butcher tray if I want to use a brayer or some larger tool to pick up my paint mixture it's more difficult because of the sides of the tray so I have my surface underneath my paper covered with freezer paper and then I've taped down my four pieces of my oil paper to that now what I'm going to do before I start and while the allowing the alcohol to evaporate out of my mixtures I'm going to cover each piece of oil paper with an acrylic tinted gesso just to give a base and I like to color my gesso with acrylics because that way when I if I scrape back through the wax I'm not scraping back to white I'm revealing a color underneath so I try to use a color that I know is going to complement the colors in my palette of cold wax and I'm so for this one I'm going to use the um, studio what color is this it's bright aqua green it's a nice aqua color I think it'll be nice underneath so I'm gonna get these based and let my paint sit for a few and I'll be I'm back. back I'm not ready yet but quick tip I had a hard time opening my jar of clear gesso because it had dried between the lid and the jar on the ridges around the edge just take a little bit of Vaseline chapstick will work too and just run it around the edge and that will prevent your lid from sticking to your jar just thought I would mention that as I'm doing it just takes a little bit all right okay the acrylic and gesso layer that was clear gesso but that layer is dry dried it with the heat tool and I started to apply the cold wax to see what the colors were going to look like on this aqua background and I wish I had chosen a more transparent and maybe lighter background but it is what it is because this is my yellow the butterscotch and that shows up pretty well but it does take on a green hue because of the background this is actually the green and it fades into the background much more even than the yellow does which kind of surprised me and then you can see the uh, stream which is my turquoise color you can see that pretty well but I used a lot there's a lot more of the turquoise on here and I haven't even started on this one up here yet so I think I'm going to before I go any further I have a orange distress crayon rusty hinge is the color and I'm just going to make some marks in this yellow and maybe a couple up here and some on there I'm going to try pulling it through with this master's touch silicone brush 
it's pretty much just staying. I guess I have to mix it in a little more with this. It's picking up the tooth of the paper. That's better. Kind of what I was looking for it was just kind of not necessarily lines as I put them down, but more just marks. And I don't mind the marks from the catalyst in the wax. Now, mind you, this is all going to end up under a lot more layers of wax. So, rather than fight with this, it's blurred out enough that I don't mind how that one looks. Because mostly, this is going to get more layers on top, and then when I scrape back, probably tomorrow, because I like to wait until the cold wax has started to set up a little bit. Scraping back when you're working wet and wet like I am right now doesn't really work all that well. I like to wait until it sets up a little bit most of the time. Primarily um, alcohol ink. But I pulled out, I've had this little baggie of embossing powder for such a long time. And the color is called champagne. It looks just kind of gray. Am I on? It just looks kind of gray in the bag, but up close it's got some real gold metallic look to it. So I may try sprinkling some of this in at some point. I'm not to that point yet, and I might not use it, but once I get some wax on there, I might make a couple little marks over there just so that everything stays a tad cohesive since this is a series I like to do the same thing in some way on each one so I'm going to pick up a lot of this green I think what I want to do I am going to just put some on here and then I'm going to take my brayer this is the brayer that falls apart all the time but it makes such great texture to brayer that wax across the surface I mean it just happens you don't have to work at it you don't have to do anything except pick the crap out of it that was on the brayer I'm not sure if you can see that I'm gonna pick just a blob up on my brayer and I'm gonna roll it down this way get some really thick texture going that I think you can probably see that now that because of how thick it is it's going to take a while to set up if I go over it <clears throat> and I'm foggy today froggy today if I go over it um, right away I'm going to lose that texture Okay, so we got some texture with that. Um, my turquoise color, my... I keep forgetting what color that's called. Stream. Yeah, my color stream is already all used up. And I had a pretty big pile. But because it is so transparent, that's what's happening. So now at this point, I think I'm going to put some collage in these, and I just have some Tim Holtz collage tissue, and it will stick down in the wax, just push it in, and then I'm going to spread some clear wax on top of it just to seal it onto the paper better. I'm 
but it gets extremely transparent. You can see all those marks underneath there and all the colors, where, especially where the paper was white. And this is Typography Ideology Collage Paper by Tim Holtz. I just want to make sure it's inside this tape that I have taped my paper down with so that I don't end up having to fight with it when I go to take the tape off and pull it up. My dog is barking to come in the house. So I'm going to get this last piece down and then I may even just go get a coffee and give this just a little while to dry a little bit. And you see the paper is wrinkling and I, I just did that on purpose. I scooched it with my finger because I like that added texture of the wrinkles in the paper. Just add a little green back into this corner. The nice thing too if, when you're working in a series is you don't have to worry too much about color contamination one to the other because you're using the same limited palette on all the pieces. So I'm going to go get some coffee, let these sit for a little bit, and in the meantime I'm going to mix up some more paint and also mix some opaque colors using those the black and white oil paints with the alcohol ink. Okay, uh, I mixed up more color and I did several things in the process. A, I added more alcohol ink to the cold wax to make darker colors. I changed my green color from lettuce to botanical because that green was just melding into the background color too much and almost looking like pale yellow so I wanted it to be more green which you can see here this is the botanical I like that much better and then I mixed some botanical and white oil in with the cold wax and I got this nice um, opaque paler green color and then I mixed black and cold wax and added stream, but I added too much black. And so I'm not really seeing the blue, but I don't mind that. I can just use the black. That's fine. I like to have black and white usually in most of my cold wax pieces just for the contrast, even if it's just little bits here and there. So that's where I'm at. Everything is mixed up over here, and I am just going to play and continue to add layers and colors and have fun.
Gamsol, which usually just leaves spots where it drops on the painting and then is get, gets wiped back, is not reacting the same, and I'm assuming it's because of the alcohol ink. It's just blurring everything, which is fine, but not what I was going for. It, but I am liking these so far. If you noticed, I was trying to make similar marks on each of them so that things kind of stay looking like they go together, but I'm feeling like I need some white. Maybe we'll try. Oh, my yellow's all gone. I'll try some more of this opaque green instead. Maybe that will get me where I want to be. to do today not on this but just more arting to do since this is taped to the freezer paper I can just untape the freezer paper and move this aside and sit it off somewhere else to dry more and then my table's not monopolized by it and I can go on to something else so thanks for joining me in this experiment of cold wax and alcohol ink. I think, so far, I think it's a success. I can see many more layers going on top of these before they're done. They're just not speaking to me as being anywhere near finished. But like I said, they do. I think they do need to set up for a little while before I can throw any more at them because it, it's just smearing at this point. So thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, give it a thumbs up. If you have other friends who are into cold wax, maybe share the video so that they too can play with cold wax and alcohol ink. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.